All right, hey guys, and welcome back to the channel, or welcome if you are new here. Now, today's video is going to be great. It's gonna be immaculate. It's gonna be a good one, because what is more fun than setting up a brand new tank. As you know, I have this 120 gallon reef aquarium that's home to about a dozen tropical saltwater fish and tons and tons of coral. Like, this tank is packed. And honestly, I've run out of space in that tank. The last fish I added was a baby puffer fish and that tank is pretty much at max capacity. Now that is my baby that has the fancy reef lighting, a sump, a protein skimmer, the fanciest wave makers. I can control the entire tank from my phone. like. That tanks the top of the line, basically. But I thought it would be fun to try something out that's a little bit more budget friendly. This tank behind me can run thousands and thousands of dollars, depending on where you source your coral or your equipment from. So altogether, that tank can be very expensive and hard for some people to start out with, which I totally understand. So that's why I thought it would be fun to get some budget equipment and set up a budget reef tank. Now, obviously, we're not going crazy cheap. I'm still using very high quality materials. But I thought I would take you along the journey with me of setting up a new saltwater aquarium. Now, this tank is going to be different from the tank behind me. There's going to be no coral. And obviously that can come as a shock. I have all of this coral and it's all doing really, really well. But the fact of the matter is, for most reef tanks, you need fancy lighting and really good filtration. Because corals are a lot more needy when it comes to water parameters than saltwater fish. This can mean that for saltwater beginners, it's a little bit difficult to navigate the coral market and the coral system. So what's better to start off a beginner reef tank than just doing fish only? That means we don't need crazy lights, we don't need crazy filters, we just need a basic, beautiful aquarium. Now that I've explained a little bit about what's going on here today, uh, let's check out the tank. So this is the exact tank I got. It is an Aquion 36 gallon bow front aquarium. Now it has its own LED light, but it's just a standard white LED light. So what I have done is found a different LED light hood that sits over the top and it just has a basic white LED strip and then I ordered a basic blue LED strip. So it's nothing but just visual lighting. It's not strong enough to grow corals at all. It's just to make the tank and the fish look pretty. Other than that, it's just a bare bones 36 gallon tank and stand. Now luckily I already have some Carib Sea Life Rock, the Life Rock tree to be specific. Carib Sea Life Rock is a great rock for reef aquariums. It's easy to order online. You can get it literally anywhere. Even Petco sells Carib Sea Life Rock. It's a dry rock so you don't have to worry about introducing pests into your aquarium and it's very easy to build and put together. And then I also went ahead and used some leftover dry sand from this tank. So the first thing we have to do is go check out the tank. I gotta vacuum it out because there's some sand in there. Put new sand in, put new rocks in. So I'm gonna throw you back to that footage and then we'll come back here and check out some more equipment. And now that we have the sand in, just try to get a nice look. This is the Carib Sea Hawaiian Black Sand. It's leftover sand that I have from my 120 gallon tank. And it was just enough to have a nice little thin layer in here. Now because this is probably going to be fish only, we don't have to worry about a super crazy deep sand bed or anything like that. So just enough that it looks pretty, it will serve a purpose. You don't even need sand by the way, you could totally do bare bottom. But now that we have the sand, I'm gonna go ahead and grab a whole bunch of Carib Sea Life Rock. Carib Sea actually sent me a Life Rock tree um, from a little giveaway thing, but I think I'm gonna deconstruct the Life Rock tree. We have a whole bunch of Life Rock arches and stuff like that. So I'm gonna grab all that, figure out what I'm gonna do with it. We'll throw on another time lapse and we'll see what I come up with. So this right here is a very rough idea of what's gonna go on. So this is, like I mentioned, a Carib Sea Life Rock tree. So all this is designed to be stacked kind of in like a tree, like a tall formation. But the weight of this tank, it just didn't really suit that. So I took it all apart. We have three Life Rock arches in here and then one big flat Life Rock piece on the bottom. Once again, this is not at all final. This is just a quick, literally just throwing rocks together and seeing how it looks. So as you can see, I think it turned out pretty good for just for a first rough draft, if you will. So I think I have the basics done for filtration. We'll talk about that later. But for sand and rocks, here we are. We're pretty much done with step one. So now that you have totally seen the tank and you get a feel of what's going on, I gotta show you some equipment because I did pick up some new equipment for the tank. Peep the festive little Christmas tree in the background. Um, I don't know when this is being uploaded, to be honest with you. Um, 
it could literally be past Christmas by the time you see this. Anyway, we already discussed lighting, which is gonna be basic LED lighting. It came with the aquarium kit, but I just substituted it for a different Aquion hood that just allowed me to hold two bulbs instead of one, which is a blue bulb that kind of, you know, brings out some of the aquarium fish's colors, and then just a standard white bulb. Nothing fancy, remember that. Next up, okay, my turtle just flew into the water, ignore that. We have a heater. I went ahead and bought a new heater. This is the Eheim Jaeger 100 watt heater. My saltwater tank has this exact heater, 100 watt and a 200 watt heater, and my freshwater tank has this exact 100 watt heater. These are awesome heaters. They're really easy to calibrate. I'll just pop this guy open real quick. There's some suction cups right here, and then if I can pull it out, here is the heater. Super basic aquarium heater. I'm gonna set it to 77 degrees. That's perfect temperature for saltwater fish. Super basic, set it in the water, plug it in, it does its thing. 100 watts is perfect for a 36 gallon tank because 100 watts with this Eheim heater specifically is for up to 40 gallons. Next up, I went with a canister filter for my saltwater tank just because I had it on hand um, and I didn't see a reason to buy a new filter. You can use hang on back filters. They just don't hold as much media. But keep in mind with the canister filter, you are gonna have to keep it clean because if you let your canister filter build up and get nasty, it will actually leach stuff back into the water and not be as effective. So if you're gonna use a canister filter on a saltwater aquarium, which is not always recommended, you just have to make sure to use the right media and keep it clean. So now that you have seen the tank, the rock, the sand, the filter, and the heater, we're ready to put everything together. So now the rock and the sand's already in the tank. I'm still waiting the blue light bulb to arrive, but we can go ahead and install the canister filter and install the heater. And we have the tank basically set up. Coming down into the tank, we did some work. There's now a black background on it, which was in the dollar store. Super easy, just it's literally 69 cent paper. And then we have all our equipment right here. So this is the intake to the canister filter, the outtake to the canister filter, and then right here is the heater, like so. Now the good thing about the black background is it really helps the uh, like equipment blend in. So when you're actually looking at the tank when it's full of water, you will barely be able to see the black um, parts of the heater and the black filter pipes. Now we actually have to set up the canister that goes down below. And right down here is our canister filter. So this is the Marine Lean 220 canister filter. It does 220 gallons per hour, I believe, and is good for a tank up to 55 gallons. So digging deeper into the canister filter, there's about four baskets in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a quick time lapse of us filling up those baskets with some filter media, and then I'll come back and show you exactly what I put in there. And here we are. So this canister filter fills from the bottom to the top, so that's how I arrange the filter media. First up, we have a coarse filter pad on the bottom, fine filter pad on top, put this down. Next are just some bio balls to kind of break up the water flow. Then we'll do a whole bunch of ceramic rings, and then we'll finish it off with a little carbon bag and a few more bio balls. So this now will accomplish a lot of mechanical filtration, which is great, as well as biological filtration with the bio rings and the bio balls and chemical filtration with the carbon. Now the carbon's not totally necessary. It's just good while the tank's new to remove any impurities in the water. And then the bio ball and ceramic rings should not be an issue as long as we keep them clean and free from detritus that could build up in here. And here is the new 36 gallon reef tank or saltwater tank because we're not putting coral in it. But here it is almost all complete. Now the last thing we need is right up here. You see there's only one light bulb. I have another one coming to make the tank a little bit more blue instead of the kind of cool white it is right now. So we're waiting for that to show up, but as soon as that shows up, we're ready for water and we're ready to start cycling the tank. So I guess I'll pick this up right where we left off as soon as the blue light bulb comes in. And just like that, we have a blue tank. Well, sort of, I ordered the wrong light. So if you look here, um, it doesn't fit. So I ordered the wrong one. Actually, they sent me the wrong one because this light is like 18-ish inches. This one I ordered said it was for 20 inches. So I'm like, 20 is pretty close to 18. No, this is literally 14 inches. So I have to wait for the other one to show up. But regardless, it's basically the same. As you can see, the tank has a little bit more of a blue hue to it, which is exactly what I was going for in this saltwater tank. So now the first thing I'm gonna do is start filling this up with salt water. I just did a water change on my 120 gallon tank. So I have a clean bucket of salt water left over that I'm going to dump in here. Then, as soon as I have that done, I have a couple just random five gallon buckets of fresh salt water. I'll fill that up. We'll probably only get like 15 gallons or so in here, 
and then right now I'm making the rest of the salt water with my RDI machine and we'll get all that mixed up. So I'm gonna throw you to a time lapse, we'll start filling this tank up. So once all the water is in, we'll plug all the equipment in and start getting everything flowing. Without further ado, let's add some water. There we go, the tank is set up, the filter's running, the heater's running, and we're completely full of water now. So this tank is gonna take a little bit for it to go ahead and you know clear out some of the dust and debris that are in here. It still has to heat up to the correct water temperature. So this is where we're gonna end off today's video. This is the progress we've made. We've done a ton. We got the filtration set up, heating set up, lighting set up, rock structure, sand, everything set up. We're really just waiting on doing fish a little bit later once the tank's had a chance to run through its courses. Now, kind of going back a little bit on water, I guess I can close that. I wanna talk a little bit about mixing salt water. So if this is your first salt water tank, I'd recommend just buying salt water. Your local fish store will sell like five gallon buckets of pre-mixed salt water. That's perfect. You just use that, put it in your tank, and you're done. Then as water evaporates in your tank, you will have to top it off with fresh water. So salt does not evaporate, the water evaporates. So as your salt water tank evaporates, you're gonna have to top that off with fresh water, which is RODI water, which is reverse osmosis deionized water. Now, if you're gonna mix your own salt water, you can either have an RODI machine to purify your tap water and then give you fresh water that you can mix with a salt mix of your choice, or you can go to the fish store and get RODI water, which is basically plain water that's just super filtered. And you can use that as your top off water and you can use that to make your salt mix. So really however you wanna do it is up to you. I personally have an RODI machine and I just mix my own salt water. But if you're a beginner just starting out with your first salt water tank, I would recommend just going, buying fresh RDI water and buying salt water. That way you can maintain your aquarium with literally no effort. So you just wanna make sure to manually top off your tank at least once every two or three days, depending on how fast it evaporates. You can invest in an auto top off system, but for tanks this small, I would really just do it by hand. That's what I'm gonna be doing on this tank. So I have a little mark on this side that tells me where the perfect water level is to match the correct salinity. So in here, the salinity I have is 1.025, and you wanna keep your salinity as stable as possible. So by constantly keeping the tank topped off with the RODI water, your salinity will be very stable. So that is gonna be it for this video. In the next video, we'll get a wave maker in here and maybe start looking at some fish. So stay tuned for that video. But if you like watching me set up my brand new 36 gallon saltwater tank, don't forget to leave a like down below. If you have any questions about setting up a saltwater tank, don't forget to go ahead and comment those down below. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching and good bye.